Hi everyone, I'm Udit. Today I'm going to talk about how to get your resume ready for an engineering manager application at Meta. This advice isn't meant for role transitions though, so it's primarily relevant if you're already an EM at a different company looking to move into Meta, potentially alongside a bump up in title or leveling. I'm going to talk about six things you should ideally be covering to get your resume beyond the basics and to make it specifically relevant for Meta. All this advice has been sourced from EM recruiters at Meta, so it comes straight from the folks who are going to be actually reviewing your resume once it comes to the applicant tracking system. A lot of these tips are actually agnostic to the specific company, so wherever possible to make them relevant to Meta, I'm going to give examples to show you what a recruiter might expect to see and what then might drive a higher, say, interview call rate for you compared to everyone else applying to Meta. So given that this is a video produced for everyone, it necessarily has to be a little bit abstract in nature. If you want more personalized advice or if you want something more targeted to a specific role you might be applying to Meta for, you can also book some time or a written resume review with one of these same recruiters from Meta so then they can give you more specific feedback that's say customized to your situation. And of course, if you've already applied at a company and just want to focus on mock interviews instead, then in that case, we'd recommend talking to an engineering manager instead. Again, we've got a bunch of those from Meta who can help with this. Quick introduction, I'm from Prepfully. As you've probably made out by now, uh, we offer mock interviews and resume reviews from coaches and recruiters on our website, alongside a range of other interview prep services, such as interview questions, free practice with other candidates, interview guides, lots of them specific to Meta, and so on. Uh, we're going to include all relevant links in the description below. So it's time then to move on to the tips themselves. The first two tips are actually related to scope. So tip number one is to write very clearly about the business and technical scope that you were responsible for managing. As an EM, you're going to be expected to have a really large, meaningful scope in Meta, and you're going to be expected to drive the technical strategy and execution of whatever domain you're responsible for. So it's really important to show that you've done this in the past. Meta typically isn't going to hire an EM unless they're already an EM. So the only exception to this is if you show very clearly the kind of wide ranging scope that you've managed in the past. Now, from a business perspective, there needs to be a breadth of topics and complexity. From a technical perspective, there needs to be meaningful depth of technical complexity, and this needs to come through in your resume. Now, specifically for Meta, they want to see you having built awesome things. This is one of their core values, and an effective way to do this is to tie your scope into a relevant business or technical achievement that you drove. We're going to talk briefly about impact later, which will articulate how to drive home the awesomeness of whatever you've built. Uh, but then that's tip number three. The important part for this tip is to remember to tie anything you've done back to the business impact or back to the business or customer needs that you might have driven. Tip number two then is also scope related. It's to be really, really specific about your people management scope. Your number one responsibility as an EM is to manage people. So you want to articulate very clearly your, again, your breadth as well as the depth of your people management skills. Now here, what's breadth and depth? Your breadth of coverage is the number of people you've managed. Your depth of coverage is much more interestingly, their degree of seniority. So have you managed seniors or principals? Are you a manager of managers? So have you managed other people who are also managers themselves? Or do you prefer or have you primarily managed individual contributors in the past? Have you ever managed non-engineering resources? So these could be technical program managers or data scientists or technical support. Uh, have you ever managed more specialized engineering roles with their own separate needs and ways of evaluating them and with their own career paths, such as front-end engineers or Android and iOS engineers or production or site reliability or security engineers and so on. The reason these distinctions are important is because you demonstrate the ability to manage increasing levels of, compl of complexity with the breadth as well as the depth here. And as people become more senior, their needs become a lot more nuanced and managing them is often a whole separate ball game. So you, if you've done it in the past, you absolutely need to make sure you flag this upfront. In the context of Meta, the level you're actually going to be interviewing for is determined by this. This is also a section to show your alignment with another principle that Meta cares about, which is move fast. Again, another key guiding principle for them, because move fast refers not just to the velocity of experimentation and learning, it also applies to how quickly you solve problems. And the problem could be building out a team or a set of teams for a particular scope. A great way to show how you sustain this principle should be could be to allude to zero to one impact that you might have achieved in the context of setting up a team and the time you took. Uh, let me give an example, say, uh, built out a full stack team from scratch within eight weeks to adhere to a new set of regulatory requirements around privacy. 
Or another example, expanded scope to cover two overlapping teams with similar goals focusing on account security, achieved operational efficiency with 80% of the headcounts in three months and achieved an eventual reduction of 6% in re-verification attempts or whatever. Like I'm making up stuff here, but you get the idea. The idea is to show that you not only can broaden your scope when necessary, but also that you do it fast. And that all ties into your ability to manage people and bring them up to speed and up to the performing state as quickly as possible. Tip number three is all about impact and how you show that within your resume. Now, this is something I also alluded to in tip number one, and it's actually relevant to a lot of tips that I'm going to cover. But you will have previously driven impact across a range of scenarios and to a range of degrees. And it's really important to give specific examples of these scenarios because driving impact is ultimately a core part of your job description. The key thing is both to have a relevant metric for each achievement and then use that metric to show the true extent of what you achieved. So here's a couple of examples of what you could cover when it comes to metrics. Uh, if you're covering customer impact, then you could be talking about the customer experience, measured through CSAT scores or measured through reviews. If you're talking in the domain of e-commerce, it could be returns or CS tickets. Uh, you should talk about business impact as well, uh, measured through sales, revenues, number of transactions, cost reductions, if that was your scope. Um, you should also bring up technical impact if you had an opportunity to drive that. I'll talk about this in a lot more depth in tip number six, but this could be stuff like latency, downtime, or the scale you built up to. It could be whether you force multiplied your team's impact through building a particularly powerful API or a platform. Um, and then, of course, there's the type of impact that I referred to in the previous tip, which is the performance impact. You could maybe grow a team from X to Y contributors, you could drive faster velocity, be it of deployments or releases or of learnings. These are all ways to drive home the sort of impact you've driven. And it's totally okay to have different metrics or different situations. What is important to have them in there because they, are, they allow you to quantify your achievements. And they're a lot more powerful than just saying things like responsible for XYZ or worked on XYZ metric without showing how much difference you made. Tip number four then is all around leadership and influence. Now, why is this important? As an EM, you're going to often have direct leadership through the people you manage. You'll often also need to demonstrate indirect leadership through your persuasion and influence abilities. You're often going to need uh, support or outcomes from teams that aren't necessarily within your sphere of control, but are within your sphere of influence. And you should reference in your resume if you've done this in the past, because it's a very leading indicator to your recruiter that you can succeed in the sort of very high collaboration environment that Meta has. In fact, Meta is often going to have an interview explicitly targeted at understanding if you can do partnership and if you can work cross-functionally across different domains and different teams. So it's very, very useful to show upfront to your recruiter that you have done this kind of thing in the past and that you will succeed in your interview because uh, ultimately that's what a recruiter is filtering for. And ways of doing this is through using leadership and influence-focused keywords like such as drove or led or initiated or work with cross-functional teams. Uh, to demonstrate influence, you want to use words like collaborated or partnered or, or brainstormed with. And if you're particularly senior, this is also your opportunity to drive home that fact by mentioning if you sponsored a project or you steered a particular initiative or you directed something, because these are all indicators to your recruiter that you've done this kind of stuff in the past. Tip number five then is to ensure that you adequately cover the project management part of things. So this is more like a checkbox tip. As an EM, you're necessarily going to have managed projects in the past, which could have gotten pretty technical in their own right. And you're going to be expected to do this in your new job as well. So the meta recruiters we talked to felt it's really important to mention on your resume at least some projects that you've A, managed end-to-end -end, and B, where there was some sort of complexity. And the complexity could have been of different types. It could have been skill or um, a complex set of requirements or some particularly sensitive information you were storing, such as payments or whatever. Uh, it could also be logistical complexity, such as a scarcity of resources or particularly tight timelines, which sometimes happens realistically for regulatory projects. And finally, it could also be stakeholder complexity. So within a group uh, where you were working with a group of multiple stakeholders with very different needs or opinions, this often happens if you engage with teams with different incentives and different uh, reasons for existence, so to speak, like tax and compliance will have a very different goal to strategy and um, product, for instance. So then that, that could be an example to highlight if you've been involved in, in the past and where you've driven projects in spite of differing opinions. Now, within the context of meta, given how important it is to show end-to-end -end stuff, uh, things you could do to demonstrate this is to use keywords such as initiated or innovated or built and launched or drove. 
Uh, Meta recruiters ideally want to see you haven't done something difficult. So prioritize projects with either had a lot of impact or a lot of technical complexity and then call out that complexity um, in your resume. So it could be through just saying used by XYZ users or we're responsible for XYZ millions in revenue or covering the scope of XYZ teams across Y divisions. Uh, because you effectively want to show your recruiter that you can drive your projects forward in spite of obstacles that you might face. Finally, tip number six then is to ensure that you have adequate coverage of technical skill. The vast majority of companies do expect technical competence from engineering leaders. There are some companies which don't. There are some teams which don't even within companies they do. But we're going to talk about the generic use case and Meta isn't one of them that doesn't care. So if you're going to get invited to an interview, you're going to have system design around. You might even have coding rounds uh, as an engineering manager. So you absolutely want to make sure that your technical skills come through in your resume. Ultimately, Meta is going to expect you to hold your own with other engineers and also guide your team to a successful outcome, uh, to a successful set of technical outcomes such as architectural decisions and the like if you were to get hired. So you want to show upfront in your resume that you've done this kind of stuff in the past. Uh, there are three ways of doing this. A, list out the technologies that you're familiar with. This is a no-brainer, but make sure you only list those out that you can, you're willing to maybe code in or that you can competently answer questions on if it comes up in an interview. B, try to show how you've used these technologies and the knowledge of these technologies to multiply your impact in the past. This could have been through doing code reviews, uh, potentially through doing pair programming, because it shows that you don't just have a deep understanding of these technologies, but that you can apply them in conversations and in helping other people get up to speed. And thirdly and finally, technical systems design is very, very important. You want to use keywords such as architected or designed or conceptualized when it comes to technical decisions you've made. And you want to show that you can come up with um, systems that scale in the context of meta or have uh, technical complexity of a certain nature. That we've given lots of examples earlier in this video. So pick one of those in that context. Good. That's basically it from us. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these tips are a little bit generic in nature. So if you want to get either personalized feedback or feedback specific to a role you're planning to apply that's really important for you, then you can book a one-to-one -one resume review, either written or verbal, with one of these meta recruiters. If you're already in an interview stage, then you can also book a mock interview uh, with a meta engineering manager. But they focus on both the initial rounds, which are mostly people management and uh, the technical interview, but also on all the on-site rounds. So you can then get targeted feedback on your stories and whether you're surfacing those skills adequately. Um, if you have specific questions about the EM uh, role at Meta or about the EM interview process at Meta, then please feel free to ask in the comments below and we'll try to put together content for that. Prepfully has generally got a lot of EM specific content already available. So we'll include useful links in the description below. And apart from this, if you found this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and best of luck for your Meta Engineering Manager job application. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.